Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the poor and the hungry. Almighty God, we praise you for your providence which never fails. We do not worry for tomorrow, but we seek first your kingdom. Stir up the hearts of many and make them instruments of your providence to the poor and the hungry. Inspire those who have an excess to share with those in need. Remove government oppression and open their leaders' hearts to the starving and poor in their midst. Let justice and charity spring up so that all may have enough. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, and for those who are participating through 
social media, and live stream. Today we celebrate the great feast of the Annunciation, the feast of Our Lady who said yes, yes to her God, yes to all humanity, that we might have a Savior that we know and love and who loves us. But first a moment to call to mind our sins and acknowledge, acknowledge the embrace of God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the nether world, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Verbum Domini.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In Holocaust and, and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verbum Domini. Dominus Fabescum, et cum Spiritu Tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam, Gloria The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I have no relations with a man. And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible for God. 
Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Verbum Domini. My friends, today we commemorate the solemnity of the Annunciation of our Blessed Mother. You remember, this is the moment when the Archangel Gabriel visited a young, unknown Jewish girl, most likely in her teens, and informed her that she was chosen to conceive and bear the child Jesus through the mysterious power of the Holy Spirit. And her response was, without hesitation, a resounding yes. Let it be done to me, as you say. Today, we also join in prayerful solidarity with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as we join him as he consecrates the world, especially Russia and Ukraine, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Though many pontiffs have done so, Pope Francis has in a sense, pulling out all the spiritual artillery to bear on the current tragic situation in Ukraine. I join him on that event, which will occur in Rome at 5 p.m. this evening in Rome time, 11 o'clock here in Central Time, and we believe in miracles. We believe that Our Lady, through her Immaculate Heart, will overpower and overcome the weapons of destruction and we are following that we are almost we are following in almost real time. After all, under the foot of the cross, our Lord entrusted the Apostle John to Our Lady, and then He entrusted Mary to the Apostle John. Behold your son. Behold your mother. The act of consecration seeks to provide the mutual powerful embrace of Our Lady toward God's children, especially in Russia and Ukraine today, to be a refuge and protection. These past four weeks, we have witnessed through our media outlets and social platforms the horrific images of war right into our living rooms. We plead that hearts not be hardened and rather, we aspire to become brothers and sisters in the human family whose hearts beat for love of God through fraternity and solidarity as we encounter the dignity of each person that we meet who bears the image and likeness of God. In a remarkable way, and we reflect that when humanity was lost, we were not saved merely by an idea or some physical or spiritual regimen that demanded all our strength to try and fulfill. Jesus didn't save us by a doctrine or by a system of ethics. He didn't save us by the weapons of mass destruction. He proposed his son, a person, one like us, sent to us so that we could meet him, so that we could meet love itself, that we could meet mercy itself. And he showed us how to get back on the path. He showed us the dream his father had for us. What an amazing answer that all humanity was waiting for, the coming of a savior, a Messiah, through the yes of Mary, the birth of a child in Bethlehem and a person we could meet along the way. Through her and through the particular physical coordinates of time and place, it happened. The Word became flesh. 
in the womb of our Blessed Mother and was born and lived among us in a moment in history. The divine invaded our reality and we could come to know him personally and directly for he is one like us in all things but sin. Thus we could see God among us, our Emmanuel. Now, we have been recalling this event for more than 2,000 years. At first, Mary treasured it in her heart, and then we know she shares it with all of humanity. When all seem like we've waited an eternity for an answer, we recognize in our readings a similar experience. Certainly, the Jewish people were in Babylon, in exile, far, far away from Jerusalem, their home, must have felt that same hopelessness and uselessness. Yet they mustered the courage to keep hope alive. The Lord will come. He will come in glory. He will come and save us. He will come and redeem us. He will come and bring us home. Yes, even the sign foretold by the prophet, the great prophet Isaiah, gives us the clue. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In view of the sad and tragic events in Ukraine and other hotspots in the world, we seem to be shackled by insurmountable obstacles to build a world of respect for the dignity of each other and world peace. But in one sense, we can't do it by ourselves or through our own efforts apart from God. We need a savior. We need a Messiah. We need someone to remind us of who we are and to guide us each step of the way. Preparing ourselves to accept Christ every day, saying yes to the invitation that comes our way to follow him, are not merely hollow spiritual cliches. They are not just wholesome and pious thoughts about the past or in the wake of terrible things to withdraw into one shell. As we can already see, they are insufficient to attract us and even produce a response. Jesus entered the world with a tremendous capacity to attract and fascinate people that he encountered along the way people of his own time. But as a noted French, French author, Charles Piguet, noted and wrote, he, Christ, did not waste his years groaning and demanding explanations of the wickedness of the times. He cut through it, making Christianity. Christ became such an extraordinary presence that one could not but take it into consideration as a factor of life, to reject it or accept it. No one was left indifferent, as we know. And these are the things that touch us today, for it should not leave us indifferent either. When we speak about the crises of our day, whatever results in our anxiety about the world around us, we are still looking for the first budding signs of the miracle of spring to come, that first glimmer of hope. In fact, every Advent reminds us that, that no matter what is going on around us, we are people who stand in hope because we have put on Christ a light as a radiant sign of that hope. A shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. In every Lent, we remind ourselves of the obstacles that prevent us from experiencing our conversion to the fullness of the flowering of that hope. And as for us, we are a people who don't merely think about past events. No, the nearness of Christ is something that should continue to guide us even today. Yes, we struggle to understand. We have our doubts. We are distracted. We can be very critical about we like what we like or don't like. But Christ is near to the brokenhearted. 
He lifts us up from the doldrums. He is the great event that changed the course of history. Yes, Christ is near to those in Kiev, in Mar Mariupol, Odessa, and other places affected. He came to show that life has meaning and value. And what we have before us is a beautiful thing that surpasses even all of our comprehension. It is amazing. Christianity generates persons like this, a person not able to reduce humanity, but one who fills us with hope because Christ is near, dwelling in our midst, leaving our freedom intact, but walking with us in the journey of life, saying, follow me. He is constantly educating us about our life, our freedom, our call. On this solemnity of the Annunciation, we know we are not alone, we are not abandoned. We have joy and peace and hope that cannot be explained by those who have no hope. May Our Lady, who in her youth said yes, let it be done to me as you say, be a constant reminder and reason for us to rejoice in this hope. Christ the Lord is near. After all, he reminded us, I am with you always until the end of the world. May God bless you all.
We have all gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption on the solemnity of the Annunciation. Let us therefore ask Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of peace and life. In thanksgiving for this day, the consecration of the church and all humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that today's entrustment may bring peace and unity among all peoples and nations. Through the mercy of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who became flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who hold public office and those who assist them, that their work and efforts may always promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the works of evangelization and the Eucharistic Revival Initiative, that the Holy Spirit may assist the Church's efforts for the salvation and benefit of many souls. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in this place, and for those with us through the media, that we may be faithful to the will of God, be instruments of the Lord's peace, and one day be reunited in the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that they, what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord.
Pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate its mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exaltation as we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with your Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Josephat, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. I believe that you, O Jesus, are in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart, I embrace you. O never, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O Lord Jesus, I beseech you, absorb my mind, that I may die through love of your love, who were graciously pleased to die through love of my love. Amen.
Let us pray. <laughs> Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that, confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always.
for vocations, God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth. We beg you to send labors into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness so that your word may spread and be glorified and all nations may know you, the only God, and him who you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, Pray for us.